May the grace of God and the peace of God Almighty from Jesus Christ and the Father give you ears to hear. May he bless the obedient and the faithful to go on to perfection. May he give you the grace to be diligent in seeking him in his presence so he can impart more glory, more power, and more righteousness to follow him and abide. Um, Brother Joseph Herbert wants to talk about transference. And what I mean by that, what is what I mean by that is transferring what? Transferring power. I was so let me just begin with this. I had an old my old cell phone. This device I'm on now is a cell phone that was uh what's the one i'm looking for holy ghost that was replaced a replacement phone so yes holy ghost thank you so it was it's a replacement phone but the old phone i could not um charge my phone right because of the port and so i needed a replacement phone so a cell phone company sent me a replacement phone and I thought about many things that came to mind as far as like transferring data. So what is data? Data is information. Data is in this modern day technology. They use that word for information um, and power. And this is what's being transferred. So I was on the phone with the lady uh, from... The secular company, secular, uh, not secular, cell phone company, and she was explaining me, explaining to me how to transfer the data from my old phone to a new phone, and so, and you know, I have an Apple device, and so she told me to put put my phone right next to the old phone, and I, and when I did that, it was a circle that appeared, and. I had it next to my old phone and it was like a staticky circle like the, those old televisions that you would see with no channel. And then it became greater as it became connected. And then the data processing or the transference started. And all the things that was on my old phone to my replacement phone was being transferred. So that made me think about the power of God and why certain people do not think of or do not think God is real, do not think the power of God is real or the laying of hands or the gifts of spirit is real or the casting out of devils is real. When you have natural devices, when you have natural usage of power. Your remote control on your TV, you know, and I, sometimes I don't, atheists are not the only unbelievers on the planet. You have people who just don't believe in the power of God, but they believe in a God that they say, and yet they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. You have some people, I used to walk with some people who are professed believers but denied the power thereof. They didn't believe in the gift of tongues. They didn't believe in the cast. Well, they never talked about the casting of our devils. They never talked about the laying on of hands. And so, but yet they believe in uh, the Christian rap or the other worldly um, Christian profess believers. And so, what is the transference that I'm talking about. Yes, when when I became born again, when I committed to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, it, you know, one of my testimonies that the laying on of hands to receive the Holy Ghost, there that's an example of transference of God's Spirit in me to be filled. And one of my first gifts was the gift of tongues, the gift of the Holy Ghost, transferring power. 
And so power was transmitted by the laying on of hands. And then as I continue to follow the Lord and obey him, then more power is given. More power from his spirit is given. Um, the gift of healing, the, everything that Jesus Christ said in, towards the end of Mark chapter 16. You will begin to cast out devils. You will begin to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Um, what else he said? There, there are many things that the promises of God by Jesus Christ has said that will happen. These are the signs that they all will follow and believe. And believe, you have to believe. And so, yeah, when I saw when I you know got my replacement phone and the transferring of data from one phone to another, that that was intriguing because you have two separate devices that are apart like that and power that you cannot see is coming. Information that you can't see is going from one phone to another phone. So and likewise. As I give an example on when I ever have, when I have encountered atheists or agnostics or even people who just can't believe or don't believe, you you have the wind. The wind you can't see the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can tell when debris is being blown from one place to another. You can't see the frequency of a remote control. That may, you want to cut on a TV or something. You you can't see the the frequency of the power of the remote control that, that leaves the remote control to the receiver, to the satellite, back down to cut on your TV or to cut on whatever thing. You can't even see the blue. You can't see the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth of the frequency from your phone in your earpiece. Or you can't see. Okay, yes, I have an Apple device. You can't see. The, the data being transferred when I press airdrop to download music that glorifies God. And I have to put that in there. You can't see it, but something happened. So people can't see God. Yes, God is, yes, he is the invisible God. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. He is the God of all creation manifested in the in the flesh that walked the planet, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ walked the planet and cast out devils. He did many wonderful works that people marveled, people were, were astonished. And you still have people that did not believe like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, chief priests and the elders and many other people that did not believe. And so that was that was a demonstration. And last my last video, I talked about Judas Iscariot. Um, that when he was at supper, matter of fact, that's in John 13. I'll turn to it real fast. It's right here. OK, verse two. I'm going to read this. Because I made a point, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus Christ. And it says this, and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So I talked about how demon spirits, how the devil can put in, put thoughts in people's minds through sin. Through what we see, how we hear, how what you know, what is the access for them to enter in? No, you cannot see spirits unless the Holy Ghost gives the believer that spiritual discernment. Yes, that spiritual discernment. God can give. God gives what he wants to those who believe on him. And so the devils can put in thoughts, put thoughts in people's minds to sin more. That's why for the believers, for the sons of God, it's very important to confront thoughts that is not the voice of God or, that's, or that does not align with the word of God. 
Jesus Christ is the word of God. Wisdom and might are the Lord's. So Judas Iscariot was sitting at the supper, at the, you know, the last supper. And it says the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, put in what? Put in thoughts. Jesus made mention in one of the gospels that the thoughts of men's heart are murders, blasphemies, adulteries, fornications, uh, cursings. He named a few things that the, that describe the thoughts of the heart. There are your heart can have thoughts. What you know, Jesus made mention to uh, his disciples, saying that, "Why do you reason these things in your hearts? So your heart can have thoughts. You you." And the simple or maybe even, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but the naive cannot understand that. You, you need spiritual discernment if you are a son. You need spiritual discernment to go on to perfection. To know that when you fear God, wisdom begins, understanding be begins. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So... Again, let me read this. You have to you have to understand that yes, devils can put thoughts in people's minds. So where is that in scripture? Again, I gave an example. Judas Iscariot and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. The thoughts were from the, the devil, the wicked one, the old serpent, to put into the heart of Judas Iscariot. To do what? Transformers of sin, which was an open door because he was a thief. That describes the cursed role of the devil because he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And power that God gave him because he is the Lord is using the devil. That's why we don't fear the devil. We don't fear evil. We fear the Lord. And he put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him. Now, yes, again, like I said in my last video, you know, it was already prophesied about the son of perdition. Jesus Christ referred to Judas Iscariot as the son of perdition. And so when devils put in, put thoughts in people's minds, that's transference because of access to your soul. That's why when Jesus says in Matthew 6, the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. Meaning, if you focus on the righteousness of God, focus on his will, uh, focus and keep your mind uh, clear of his will for your life, your whole body will be full of light. So God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. The prophet Daniel puts it like this, that he says, when he was revealing King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he says, you reveal the deep and secret things. You know what's in the darkness for light dwells with you. He's re He was referring to the Lord as light as he was praying to him. And then also in 1 John, that if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So that's the transference of God's glory on the sons. You have power. You obey. God will impart more glory. God will impart. He will impart more power to obey. As you seek him every day, you need the presence of God. And so... The access for demon spirits to enter in is sin. Yeah, so one of the things that G Judas Iscariot was, he was a thief. And, you know, you have other things that, okay, like King Saul. King Saul, he did not fully obey the Lord through the, through the prophet Samuel. Samuel was commanded by the Lord to command Saul to kill the Amalekites. Everyone and everything spared no one. He spares, King Saul spares Agag. King Saul uh, left a few sheep. He spared a few sheep and, and, and um, other animals. And so when the prophet Samuel returned, 
not in seven days, but eight days, he comes to confront King Saul about his decision. And King Saul presents himself like he, he did he did the right thing, like he served the Lord. No. What is this ble what is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears that I'm hearing? What is what is this? You spared the king of the Amalekites, King uh uh Agag. And so that was an open door, and it was over for King Saul. So King Saul, the tr what was the transference? The transference of his disobedience for devils to enter. That's why the Lord sent an evil spirit to King Saul, and it says that First Samuel, uh, verse First Samuel sixteen. I forget what verse, but it's in there. So David, the son of Jesse, had to come and play the harp to remove the demon, the evil spirit that the Lord gave King Saul. So, King Saul, what was transferred to him was an evil spirit. Uh, David, the son of Jesse, played the harp. Har and the harmonious sound of a harp is heaven-like. So, darkness is of the wicked one and the falling angels. So, when they hear harmonious sounds that is from God, especially one who serves God, who is after God's own heart, like David, the son of Jesse, the transmitting of power, the transmitting of God's glory removes the evil spirits. But yet they did not stay away from King Saul. So King Saul, he pursued after David. First he loves him, but then there, there comes the the darkness of or the dark side of King Saul because of his, the curse of his life. The Lord removed the kingdom. He rent the kingdom from King Saul because of his disobedience. And he became very jealous of King, uh, well, not King yet, David, the son of Jesse. He wanted to kill him. He tried to send him on a mission to bring me back the four skins of the Philistines, 104 skins of the Philistines. David, the son of Jesse, went the extra mile and bought and brought back 200, uh, 200 uh, skins of uh, four skins of the Philistines. Yeah, and this angered King Saul again because the Lord was with him. But yet he feared David because the Lord was with David and he knew it. And, you know, he tried to kill him. Once again, by throwing a spear, a javelin, and he was unsuccessful because the Lord was with him. The Lord was protecting David, the son of Jesse. And, and then until after the prophet Samuel dies, the Lord was not speaking to Saul anymore. And that is very, it's a cold feeling. That is a very bothersome, I don't even want to think about the Lord not speaking to me anymore or nor do any other son of God wants to think about that but god is faithful and merciful and if you are in christ jesus you are committed to him your thoughts will be established because you have work to do and you need a focused mind you need a focused mind to continue pressing towards the mark for the high calling of god that is in christ jesus and what does focus look like I thought about Proverbs chapter 4. It says this very powerful verse towards the last three chap the last three verses of this chapter. And it says, it starts off, let your eyes look right on and let your eye looks look straight before you. It's describing your focus. It's describing also what Jesus said in Matthew 6. The light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, then your whole body be full of light. It says, let your eyes look right on. If you're focused on God, focus on his word, focus in worship, worshiping him in this beauty of holiness, then and letting your eyelids look right on, and God will fill you with light. And then it says, while you had this focus, now while you have this focus, it says, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Your ways will be established because you're, you're focused on the will of God and you are following through. You are obeying his instructions. 
to know that the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever, and knowing that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, you have power to obey. Verse 27 says, turn not, not, not to be distracted. You can be distracted in your thoughts. You can be distracted in this life. You can be driving somewhere and you see a billboard with something that is carnal and you have power to pull them down. That's not the focus. That's vain. That is not the Lord. Lord, what are you saying? What, what is that scripture I was trying to memorize? You know, try, you, you're trying to meditate on the word of God to stay focused because, you know, there's instructions. Let your eye lit, let your eyes look right on and your eyelids look straight before you. And it says, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Then it says, turn not to turn not to the right hand nor to the left hand, but remove your foot from evil. Remove your foot from evil. So when you're distracted and you're given in distraction, that's access for the enemy to um, make way for your uh, your your life or your mind. You have to be focused on the will of God. And I know that's easier for man to say, but James puts it like this, to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. You don't want to deceive yourself. By being distracted, you don't want to deceive yourself by um, watching things that defile you or hearing uh, ungodly conversations and you thinking about what the ungodly conversation was about. You're meditating on things that can defile you and God is not pleased. He, it's not the will of God for you to do that. It's not the will of God. And so one of the things is like, the transferring of power to your soul, God, is imparting glory to the sons of God. He's imparting more power. You want to go higher. You don't want to be stagnated or on a plateau. No, you are a branch. You are Jesus Christ described the sons of God, those who believe branches, the root of of the offspring of David is Jesus Christ. He is also described the true vine. The true vine, we abide in the true vine so that the true vine can abide in us. Jesus Christ, we abide in him because he is holy. He is who we focus on. We don't look again, like just like Proverbs chapter 4, not look to the left hand nor to the right. Uh, let our foot be removed from evil. We focus, we walk straight, we walk in the spirit, we walk in the power of God's power, God's glory. And so I was meditating also on the, the crucifixion of Christ. And you know, us as sons of God, we preach Christ crucified. So one of the things is that Jesus Christ he was perfect in thought, word, and deed. No deceit was ever found in his mouth. And so he was charged of and falsely accused, which is also an abomination to the Lord because that's one of the six things that the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination to him. And they sent false accusations against the Lord. So... What's the transference, the abomination of the being a false accuser? That's what the devil does. And so that's why it's an abomination. The devil wants to accuse. the. He, he is known as the accuser of the brethren. So what the chief priests and elders and scribes, what they was falsely accusing the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he, they say, he said, he said, destroyed this building and in three days rebuild it. He did not say that. They took it way out of context. So John chapter two, towards the end, he says, destroy Jesus Christ. The Lord says, destroy this temple and I will raise it up. They had no clue that he was talking about his body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So he is the sacrificial lamb and they try to send false accusations against the Lord. They was also doing some other things that is found as an abomination in Proverbs chapter 6. 
What is the six things that the Lord hates? Yet seven are an abomination, a proud look. What is the proud look? You look like you are in competition. You look like like you're better than the next person. You look like you know it all. That's the proud look. The expression of that, I, I don't want anyone to demonstrate, but that describes pride in the heart of man. Pride communicates to demon spirits. And if you continue in that, they have access to your soul. Your whole body is full of darkness. So the Pharisees and chief priests and elders, that's what they was doing. They was falsely accusing, and the Jews also, they was falsely accusing the Son of God for things he did not say or do. They say he perverted the nations. And they was also the same people, the same religious leaders that stirred up the crowd to scream, crucify him, crucify him. And then one of the gospels, I don't think it's in John, but I believe it's in either Mark or Luke. When he was also being accused of things he did not say, they, they said, we adjure you, meaning we charge you or command you by the, they said, we adjure you by the living God that you tell us, are you the son of God or the son of the just? And Jesus, since they said, we adjure you by the living God. So the son of God has to answer because you're talking about his father, our father, which are in heaven, which is in heaven. He has to answer. He says, yes, and you will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. And they took it as blasphemy. Why? Because they are in darkness. Darkness comprehends not light. Power from God transferred through the Son, Jesus Christ. He spoke this. They have to get offended. They have to take it as an offense so they can say they, or they can find a reason to crucify him because that's the motive of their hearts. That's what is that's what is um, being communicated in the atmosphere. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he was in the midst and Pontius Pilate questioned him saying that. What is truth? Now, that's what I was reading to in John. In what chapter that is? I think that's, in, I believe that's in chapter 18. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. When he was in front of Pontius Pilate. Let me see. I spoke openly. Nope, that's not it. My kingdom is not of this world. Yes, this is it right here. So... Uh, which verse that is when he says what is truth but you can pass over king of the Jews give me one second I gotta find it I have to find it verse okay that's it's in chapter 19 or 18 one of those two more afraid Pontius Pilate Jesus scored okay hold on the cry again, Barabbas. Nope. Probably therefore said unto him, Are you the king then? Okay. Verse 38. Pilate said unto him, What? Yeah. Verse 38. Okay. So Pilate said to him, Jesus Christ, What is truth? And when he had said, said this, he went out again to the Jews and says to them, I find in him no fault at all. They try to find fault. Jesus Christ was blameless, just like the prophet Daniel when he was um, they falsely accused for potential, uh, trying to say, they try to get the king of the Medes, King Darius, to sign a decree. They deceived him but from doing that. But they was jealous of the prophet Daniel um, in Daniel chapter 6 because he was preferred over them more than the presidents and the princes. So they get the they get the king to sign a decree that whoever petitions any god except for the king of the Medes, King Darius, will be thrown into the lion's den. And that decree had did not make any sense because it's just like 
Okay, if I pray, I'm going to get thrown into a lion's den. Why so cruel? Why so hasty? Why so uh, um, harsh in that judgment? And even King Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3, when whoever does not bow to the at the hearing of the sound of the cornet, the flute, the, the harp, the sack, but the psaltery and dulcimer and all kinds of music um, will be thrown into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Yeah, you have these harsh judgments. And that is because tr darkness was transferred, is being transferred or transmitted because of sin. Sin, you have an open door, you, you, you desire to be in willful sin or you desire to do the deeds of the wicked one or you desire bad things or evil things you, you you defile yourself so transferring of power from darkness can affect your mind and your heart and so yes yeah, so Pontius Pilate wanted to know truth when Jesus was Christ Jesus the Christ was telling him who who is truth but he didn't understand so in ver let me read verse 37 Pilate therefore said to him are you the are you a king then Jesus answered you say that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. So if when you are a son of God, when you commit to Jesus, you are committing your life to truth, your mind to truth, to know truth and to Desire more truth through Jesus Christ because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And you, and you, he said it right there. Everyone that is of the truth is of Jesus Christ. Here's his voice. One of the uh, components of the whole armor of God is the belt of truth. So the Lord, as it says in Psalm 51, he desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. He will make you to know wisdom. God wants you to know wisdom. God will make you to know wisdom when you abide in the Son and in the Father. Because the three are one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When you abide in the three, they will abide in you and you will grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord God that is in Christ Jesus. You need power. You need power from on high, from his presence when you seek him diligently. And you know that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So you have to rely on the promises of God so that you can receive power to go on to perfection. Ask the Lord to sanctify you on your every day. You seek God in the morning, early in the morning. He is he should be priority of your life. Prioritize on your everyday basis. And you ask God for perseverance because, yes, the world, the world loves its own and they hate the sons of God. They hated Christ. And Jesus made mention in John 15, they, it is written, they hated me without a cause. Why? Because of sin, because of darkness, because they love uh, darkness more than light and their deeds are evil. So, the sons of God, we trust in God Almighty in all of his glory, all of his power, all of his word. All scripture is indeed given by inspiration by God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction and instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished to every good work. You trust in his word, God will give you glory and power to go forward. You stay in his presence by praying to him with all supplication. He will give you glory and power to go on to perfection. You worship him in spirit and in truth. He will give you power because he wants to pour out on you so that you can maintain a faithful life in Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. And so let your call for the believers, let your calling and election be sure. Fear God, keep his commandments and do what he says, because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I am Brother Joseph Herbert. This is for his glory.